Powell's Curve, if you do not know, has reached dangerous territories, to say the least. Now, when we look at the action on the technicals, this further leads us to the belief that fundamentals and technicals on the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ are totally disconnected from reality. Okay, so if you're a day trader, you're probably in extreme turmoil. So I'm going to break down this specifically, but I'm also going to break down the possibility. Hear me out why this could be beneficial news in the short term for the market. I'm going to explain why, because there is a thesis to this, and I believe this could be possibly playing out in the near term. Now, before we get into all that content or anything like that, I have to ask you to consider doing two things, liking and subscribing every single day here. I make videos on the channel and then on Saturdays, I make an educational video. I'll probably make an educational video tomorrow. So you guys know, since it's a you know, trading holiday, so I'll probably have it posted up for tomorrow for you guys. So make sure you check it out every Saturday make something or along the lines of education here 110 percent free so make sure you check that out the instagram link for the short form content is also down below so again let's get back to it now you're gonna see a lot of videos on this okay this is the pal curve right it's the the two year minus the three months so it basically gives you the 18 month yield right now when we look at what's happening here there's very interesting behavior because again, if you you're, you're going to see this all over the internet this weekend, I guarantee you it's been one of the biggest predecessors for the recessions, right? You know, I love looking at the, the, the 10 and 30. I'm honestly like out of it right now, but if you look at what's happening here, you know, the dot com bubble, Oh seven bubble, you know, right now pre COVID as well. Now uh, I want to warn you, Okay, and I'm not trash talking. I, I am trash talking, actually. So about a year ago, eight months ago, me, Kevin made a vi video going over the PAL curve. And the interesting thing here is that anybody with the internet can make a video, can make a post and tell you that X, Y, and Z has to happen. Okay, now again, I didn't even watch this video fully. I was like watching it. I was like, dude, get me off this. This is terrible. But people want to pretend like they anticipate what's going to happen with Powell, what's going to happen next because of what's happened in the past. But we have to identify fundamentals and what happens when we do X, Y, and Z. So I encourage you, no matter what you listen to, what you watch this weekend about the Powell curve, about the stock market in general, do your own research. Do not blindly, even this video, do your own research. Okay. So going back into what's happening here, I want to say a few things when we get to the thesis of how this could possibly signify good news, bear with me. So today, what did we have? We had some employment numbers popping out. So investing.com again, if you want to look at, you know, real time data as it's coming in, investing.com and looking at a calendar, it's probably your best friend. The app is a lot more useful than the website, in my opinion, because you can cipher out everything you don't really want to see. So today we had some interesting reports this morning. Well, what did we have? jobless claims and initial jobless cl claims okay coming into this once again we are beating expectation i don't know why this is going slow it's been going slowly but um we've again had beating expectations this is good better than better than before as well so i guess it's got revised from 98k to 246 which is good as well so we're seeing unemployment right we want to see more unemployment claims because we want the unemployment number to go up because that's what the fed wants so what does the fed need for us to pause rates right now i believe we're on track and we're very close to the fed pausing rates but what does the fed need okay we already know they are committed to the two percent goal they are not going to let up okay that is their goal they they don't care about banks collapsing they care solely about inflation now when we look at what they need we need unemployment to go up that's going to drive wages down as well so unemployment to go up number two we need inflation to slow down. Data so far has been decent. It's been good. I also believe we're on the track for CPI and PPI to come out pretty decent as well. So again, so data. So right now we have uh, jobs finally taking a turn for what the Fed wants to happen. We have data doing decent, not incredible, but all we need is it to at least stay flat because if it can stay flat, that leads them to at least coming to a pause because a longer rate stay here, eventually they will drive down inflation. You have to understand that raising rates of 50.75 doesn't do an initial damage, right? It's 
think think about it from the viewpoint of the housing market, right? Everyone's saying the housing market is going to drop. It's going to drop, but people keep buying. Okay, they're just going to keep buying. Now you'll be a little bit more picky about what you buy because you're not getting it for pennies on the dollar as far as you know interest is concerned. But when we look at it, it does slow. It slowly weakened the housing market very, very slowly. Now it's not crashing, but the housing market just slowed down tremendously, and that's what's going to happen with consumers because they're going to not be able to use credit the way that we've been able to. We're going to slow us down. You're going to see defaults rise, but ultimately it's the slowest down. It's the long game. That's the way interest rates work. If there was a, you know, a, a secret weapon they could use and just hit inflation on the head and it go away, they would have used it. So we need to use, you know, common sense on what's happening here. So that's two. Okay. That's the two things right now that's happening. And again, we, we have CPI Wednesday, so that will be confirmed on Wednesday. Um, and you'll, I'll give a lot more updates on that and I'll probably do a video going over that as well. But the next thing is Powell's curve and Powell has talked a lot about this. Okay. So this has been his like only big indicator. And he's said this quite a bit. He has said that this is the best warning sign for danger in the market. The Reuters has the best um, article you can read on this. I don't have, to have it on my computer, have it on my phone. Uh, but this is one of the better indicators. You can, and he mentions it quite a bit. Okay, he mentions the yield, this curve quite a bit. But when we look at it, you're now spiking to dangerous territories. You were already spiking to the downside, but now you just reach like all time level lows, you know, even before the dot com bubble. And that has to be a concern. So aligned with all of these, it's leading us to the thesis of a pause more than ever. That's the, the thesis that has to come into play here. And again, I am not saying, please do not misconstrue what I'm saying for. This has to mean you're going to moon and shoot up. That's not what I'm saying. But the market continues to take any idea of pausing very bullish. And they take it very, very well. So when I look at this, I take it as a viewpoint of, Yes, it'll cause a little bit of initial fear. It'll cause a little initial turmoil. Powell will probably address it. But if it leads us to pausing, you have to expect short-term upside. Okay, now what do we know about what's going to kill us? What could hurt us fundamentally? Entrenched inflation. That's the, that's the danger. So if we start seeing, and we, we are on the roadmap to seeing that, we are on that roadmap, if we continue to see the barrel rise, for instance, going into the barrel, U.S. oil, right? U.S. oil, you've pumped from $64 up to 80.4, and now you're stagnating here on the week, right? All week, we stagnated here. Oil looks incredibly bullish, like it wants to get out of this range. You traded here for like three months, or actually, I'm sorry, like four months, maybe even five, all the way back to November, okay? You've been in this range of 80 down to 72, which you had a few breakouts of the downside, but came back into it. If you break back above this, you have to assume you're coming back into $92, $90 roughly. That'd be very detrimental for inflation because gas and energy prices will spike all that back up. We've, we've talked about that enough. Okay. So you need to understand that. That's my viewpoint there. I'm going to go more in depth with this, more updates, but I encourage you, don't just rush and, th and say, oh my gosh, this has happened in the past. Every time this has happened, this means that you have to dump and crash. No. The only things that will make you really dump and crash, I'm telling you right now, fundamentally, and that's based on what's caused all these major issues, right? If we look at what happened, it signaled there was an issue, dot-com bubble, housing market bubble, right? That's what these have signaled, right? You, when this happened, the market in 2007 wasn't just parabolically dropping 30% already. Back in right here, you weren't just parabolically already dropping. Actually, this signaled kind of like the bottom of you know you you turning, right? So that's what we need to understand that's happening here. Okay. Now, the next step from this, you want to be watching the dead ceiling. That's something we have to be paying attention to. I think they're going to, I don't think they're going to like go through it. I don't think Republicans are going to go through it. I think they're eventually going to like push it through, but we'll see. I don't know. I can't predict that. And then we also need to be watching banks, but I don't think the Fed is going to let banks go under. So that's what we're looking at. And it ultimately comes back down to CPI and those numbers. If, Oil can stay controlled. I don't believe we have major concerns personally. That's where I stand. We will see unemployment rise. We will see can the consumer weaken. That will happen over time. But I don't think that's going to cause the market to get destroyed. 
because the sooner the consumer weakens, the sooner the market can get back to normal. And that's where we're at economically. So when we look at the NASDAQ, what did we mention technically speaking here yesterday? All we cared about was one thing, February highs right here, 12,950. That, that was it. If you don't believe me, you go back to Twitter. I post all this on Twitter absolutely free as well. You don't have to be in Discord. You don't have to pay for any of this. It's on the newsletter as well. February highs, I posted at 9.04 a.m., 34 minutes into market open. I said, if this holds, you have to be a bull. This is a massive level to be focused on. You already had bounced. That's what I said. The end. It was there. It was free. It was all there for you. What happened from that level? We proceeded to bounce over 200 points to the upside. I don't want to say instantly, but it was very close. We come down to it. We bounce from 12,953 all the way to highs of 13,19. 200 and almost 40 points of upside. Everyone wants to talk about the rug pull to the downside, but what have we continued to say? You're getting, and in my opinion, it continues to look healthy pullbacks creating more opportunity for that upside. We go into ES, what about it? Where was our major level here? 4,100, you had a wick below it, but ultimately what happened? You mounted it. These, all these levels are mentioned here every single day on the video, right? We don't change our thesis, we don't do anything crazy, right? I don't flex my gains, I do show my losers, I love showing the losers because there's education behind that, but there's no reason for me to flex my gains or anything along those lines. A little bit more in detail here. I wanna also show what we, what we did in this quarter, what our focus was today. As soon as this happened, I started to tell, and now we were live as well, all of our favorite plays. This morning, we started going long on Microsoft. We started getting Microsoft here at 10.04 a.m. The 290s, April 21st, they were 285. You started the day, this is where we started buying them, right here at around 284 because you held the key level at 283. From there, you went absolutely parabolic. If you didn't see Microsoft, congratulations, everyone in Discord. You, you made an absolute bag. You went from 284 all the way to 291, 292 range. Killed it. What also did we do? I started dumping my money into Google shares, which I also posted on Twitter for y'all. Absolutely free. I bought 300. I actually ended up buying 350. 350 shares of Google. Right here. 570, 105.75. What happened with Google? And just to give you a visual, I posted on Twitter. Why do I post this stuff on Twitter? Because at the end of the day, guys, I, I really do. I want to see you guys succeed. What's happening here? Google, cup, handle, try to push up. Well, what happened? Where did Google go? Congratulations once again. Google flew, broke above that level. No sign of looking back. 109 and still going. Google's an absolute monster. They had some announcement news about their AI and what they're looking to do with it. But again, all these levels, everything we're talking about here, it's mentioned on YouTube, it's mentioned on Twitter, it's mentioned in Discord. Discord, more for hand-holding. Right now, we don't have any spots. You can check if there's any spots. The link's down below. But ultimately, you're still able to get this stuff for free here on the channel. All that requires, and I know people are like, well, Tyler, you were wrong here and there. And, and, I, and I, I try to be transparent when I'm wrong. But guys, I, I can only say this enough. Being patient and doing the work doing the work that it requires to do DD, find plays, find entries, understand what we're talking about here, ask questions. We answer all the questions that you leave down below in the comments, guys. We answer every single thing. So I just encourage you, put in the work, people. That's all That's all I can say. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know how else to say it. I, people, no matter what, we're going to have trolls, we're going to have haters here on the channel, but the goal here at the end of the day is to help you guys to the best of our ability and provide the best content possible. The newsletter will be out Sunday, and this past newsletter, it gave you everything as well. Everything to watch. It said, don't don't, don't be su surprised if we get a pullback. Don't be surprised if we retest February highs. All this was mentioned. The reaction, it was all there for you guys. So again, I just want to say that. And if there's ever been a day when I want to push this agenda, it's guys, focus on putting in the work. It's not going to be easy. And I, and everyone is under this assumption that day trading is easy. And I, if I join this group, I'll get rich. And if I do this, I'll get rich. No, it's not guys. It's, it's incredibly difficult. It requires tons of discipline. And I want that to be the focus here is this is a channel where we focus on putting in work, transparency, and being accountable. That's the goal here. So I encourage you guys also every Monday through Friday, we're live 1030 AM central. We won't be live this Friday because obviously there's, you know, it's a holiday, so there's no reason, but we like to do live trading and going over to the market as well. But I encourage you guys get in there, be active, ask questions. Even if you're not in discord, we don't care if you're not paying guys. We do not care. We answer questions hundred percent for free. You don't, don't, don't have to donate or anything like that guys. It's hundred percent about you guys. 
That's our focus here on the channel. So again, let's go over what our expectations are moving forward. Now, I'm anticipating most likely we're going to push into this range about right here. And we actually did. I'm sorry. So you can actually see that we, this is where we kind of base. So we pushed down. You came right back into this kind of supply we had on the two hour and the one hour where we base and then really pushed down, came right into it, got rejected. Not surprising, especially with how much we moved on the day. You know, I, I've been saying it. We're not really moving that much to the downside. So when we start moving 250 points, almost 300 points on NASDAQ, you, you love to see it especially with the news that we got coming into, you know, ES here, very, very nice as well. Coming right back into this range, right back into it, guys. Absolutely fantastic. Almost breaking out of it, trying to push back up. This is what we love to see. This is what we want to see, guys. This beautiful, beautiful movement. So again, right now, I think you're having a great opportunity. And I think you might get a little bit of fear coming into this, the beginning of the week. Okay, I think you might get some selling a little bit, but ultimately from a technical viewpoint, I remain bullish and until we get bad data, I, I don't think fundamentally anything's going to bring you down. I really don't. Unless like we have some crazy outlandish news we can't predict. That's where I'm focused at right now. This video doesn't need to be that long, but that's the focus on everything I'm looking at here. Stocks, I'll have more stock picks coming out most likely either Monday, maybe even Sunday. But again, the podcast starts very soon as well. I really appreciate all the love, support, guys. More content coming. Again, we're trying to make as much free content for you guys as possible. I appreciate all the support. Have a good one, traders.